end.
In a manner, in a rail, in a hoi fa, tenakoto, tenakoto, tenakoto katoa. Vice Chancellor, Pro Chancellor, Council members, members of the university, special guests, graduands, families, and friends. I extend a warm welcome to this, the second spring graduation ceremony for 2011 of the University of Auckland. This week, the university is bestowing a total of 2,708 qualifications on some 2,450 students. At this ceremony, degrees will be conferred and diplomas awarded in the Faculty of Creative Arts and Industries and the Faculty of Law. A total of 197 in person, plus a further 56 in absentia. I am privileged as Chancellor to preside at spring graduation for a third year. The regularity of graduation ceremonies makes them no less special for the university and me personally than for those of you being capped here today, many for the first time. It is also a pleasure to return to the Auckland Town Hall long our traditional graduation venue for the first time since 2009. The AOTIA Centre, which we now use, has been temporarily captured for Rugby World Cup purposes. Graduation is a festive event rich in history, pomp and colour with a lively array of contemporary touches. Here in Auckland, our rich mix of cultures and ethnicities can be seen in the striking variety of dress and adornments worn by graduands. Today is one of hard-earned celebration by you, the graduands and diplomates, on your academic accomplishments and by your family and friends who have encouraged and supported you and who are here to share in your success. The university, represented by the council and academic staff members seated behind me, and those many staff who control proceedings with remarkable precision, 
takes equal pleasure at this hugely significant day for each and every one of you. The University of Auckland is deservedly ranked as one of the best universities in the world. Your qualifications will always serve you well in this country and abroad, whether in qualifying you for a satisfying career or leading to more advanced study, or simply as a route to personal and intellectual enrichment. In today's ever-changing world, you cannot afford to stop learning. So please keep in mind our enormous range of postgraduate opportunities. I urge you as alumni of New Zealand's leading university always to remember your alma mater. We depend increasingly on our graduates for support, moral and political, as well as financial. Your advocacy and influence are vital in encouraging government and the community at large to fund universities so they can generate the knowledge needed to drive a productive and competitive economy and to create full and satisfying lives for all New Zealanders. At the same time, philanthropy has become crucially important to our university, funding major capital projects, scholarships and professorial chairs. The critical contribution of major research universities is not well understood and therefore insufficiently acknowledged. It is inconceivable that a de developed progressive 21st century nation can maintain that status without strong internationally recognised research-based universities such as the University of Auckland. Our innovative research is vital for long-term sustainable economic growth and social cohesion, never more so than in the testing economic times we face in the wake of global recession and now the devastating Christchurch earthquakes. Universities equip graduates like you not simply for the jobs of today, but for future careers not yet imagined. Universities need greater investment by government, the commercial sector and private philanthropy, not less. But that's sufficient for me on the challenges facing this institution. For today is unquestionably your day. I congratulate you and trust that you will long cherish the memories of your graduation in September 2011. Our speaker this afternoon is Mr Roy Clare, who took up his appointment as Director of Auckland War Memorial, War Memorial Museum only last month. He came from Britain, where he was Chief Executive of the Museums, Libraries and Archives Council from 2007. This organisation's responsibilities include the accreditation of museums, the, de the designation of outstanding collections, and administering schemes to develop the strength and reputation of collections and encourage their accessibility to people. From 2000 to 2007, Mr Clear was director of the National Maritime Museum in Greenwich, where he expanded resourcing for scholarships, schools and informal learning. He and his team initiated highly successful exhibitions, fundraising cam campaigns and redevelopment projects. Mr Clear was awarded the CBE in June 2007 for his services to museums. He was formerly a Rear Admiral in the Royal Navy, which he joined at the age of 15. A keen yachtsman, he competed in the first Whitbread Round the World Yacht Race in 1974. Mr Clear. Uh, Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, academic staff, parents, <coughs> whenua, friends, graduates most importantly, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou. This is for me, I don't know about for you, a very happy day. I can still remember uh, graduating in physics. I can still remember paying for my children to graduate. And I can still remember running the Naval College when I was sort of the Vice-Chancellor without enough money. And I'm moderately irresponsible today, but I do empathise with everybody who's paid for something. Parents, whenua, 
friends, I suspect that's you lot. Uh, graduands, you're about to pay big time. <laughs> We've had a very interesting six weeks, my wife and I. We've been made very welcome, very welcome indeed here in New Zealand. And I bring greetings from London to this ceremony. And it is uh, therefore a 25,000 kilometer speech that you're getting uh, from somebody who has taken to New Zealand, that's why I've come here, and rather as the Chancellor suggested, I didn't know that I, my career would bring me here. And I think having read physics, I didn't know that I'd end up running a bunch of museums either. So I think just hang in there because what you've read may not be what you end up reading, if you see what I mean. What I do know is that this is rather an exciting week in other ways. Uh, it was this week in 1893 that New Zealand led the world on uh, votes for women. Uh, some 25 years ahead of the UK, for example. Uh, earlier this week on Sunday, up at the Cenotaph at the museum, uh, we marked the Battle of Britain and the 70th anniversary of the Air Training Corps. And it only rained between 11 o'clock and 11.30. So you can imagine that, as that's roughly when you do remembrance, we remembered with some stoicism and conviction the sacrifice of those who'd gone before us, and I can tell you that personally, I was sitting between an umbrella on the left and one on the right, and you know what happens. <laughs> I'm now wearing my old suit, forgive me. What we know from that commemoration, what we know from decisions such as New Zealand took in 1893, is that one of the things we will all be is leaders. We're all going to be leading something. And it seems to me, following the advice of Winston Churchill to a new member of parliament before their maiden speech. Uh, my boy, make one point only. No one will remember what it is, but they can pass you in the corridor and say, good point. I'm going to make one point only, which is that we are all leaders. And one of the wonderful things that New Zealand is tackling right now uh, in the treaty settlement era is how to be an effective bicultural nation. But in your nations, and many of you come from other countries, there will be similar grand strategic issues that affect the quality of life for millions of people. And we're not innocent bystanders in it. I think it's also interesting when you look at that idea of leadership that just today, Len Brown has published the draft Auckland plan. And this is looking ahead 30 years. It's looking to 2040. Where are we all going to be in 2040, and what jobs will we be doing? But Len is not going to lead this on his own. He needs us. Because every great city is three things. It's a great economy. Uh, it's undoubtedly a great place to live, as the livable city idea suggests. But it's also going to be a city, wherever it is, of social and economic divides. And one of our challenges one of the challenges of today's graduates is what are we going to do to assist the process of reconciliation across that divide? How do we contribute to the economy? How do we contribute to the great place to live? Well, of course, a museum and art galleries and culture generally are all about a great place to live and the economy and the understanding across generations because moderately we're neutral and we're able to be a place where people can debate but actually each one of us has, as an opportunity, the leadership to make the difference. And this isn't new. If you'll forgive uh, a mariner drawing on a mariner, uh, an ancient mariner, even more ancient than me, going back to uh, a Nelsonic period, uh, Nelson, who uh, had quite a bit to do uh, for Britain in a period when Napoleon was a bit of a risk, one of the interesting things about him was he studied the French very closely. He studied them in all kinds of ways, and he wrote copious letters. And a former colleague of mine, Dr. Colin White, no longer with us, published a thousand of Nelson's letters to commemorate the bicentenary of the Battle of Trafalgar in 2005. One of the letters picks up on Nelson's critique of a French general's leadership. And Nelson writes of the French general that there are two kinds of leadership, he's perceived. Allons we go, allez, you go. And what is interesting about Nelson's evaluation, because Nelson was always conscious of himself, 
was he writes, of course, I, Nelson, follow our law, but so does the French general. In other words, there was also an underlying admiration for the foe. Ladies and gentlemen, I think the proposition we have in front of us is that allons, we go, is a really good leadership model for us to think about as we now go out in celebration of a great achievement of degrees hard fought for. I still remember being completely overwhelmed by the whole pressure of getting the degree and then the complete joy of being awarded it and then wondering what happened next. But the we go is absolutely something we can all hang in on and it's handed down 200 years. We don't need to look for somebody who's making money today writing a book <coughs> on management or leadership technique, although they can be useful. There is a historic reference to a style of leadership in which Nelson himself worried about whether his people were fed. You might say, well, that was self-serving, he needed them to fight. In fact, he worried about them to a, a very substantial degree that their health should be protected. He worried about them in a life after they were fighting with him. And his letters nudge his captains on the quality of their living. As we go to our workplaces, as we think about this, and I've just inherited this great museum with about 500 people of one kind or another working in it. My question always is, what's it like being a cleaner in the museum? What is Talita, who I've met, who's Samoan? What's her life like and how well she's doing that job for us? So we go, ladies and gentlemen, is what I'd like to offer you as my point, bearing in mind Winston Churchill, in a very historic week, historic for you, historic in a really positive way, because from here, nothing is the same again. Historic for Fenua friends, family who've helped fund you, joyful, and I suspect for the very good people sitting behind me, a huge measure of relief too. <laughs> but thank you for inviting me to come. I hope the day is as joyful as it should be, as it deserves to be. I wish you very well in the careers that come, spectacularly so for leadership, because we need you. You need to perhaps think you can make less of a mess of it than my generation did. But I would say, actually, we need you on that equal footing right away now. We need your courage, your conviction, your integrity. And thank you for listening to me. Tena koutou. Tena koutou. Well, thank you, Mr. Clear, for a, a very interesting and uh, at times humorous speech. And he probably all, as graduates, were reminded that, in fact, it didn't finish today with graduation, that the next chapter is starting for you, and it's all about leadership. This is a meeting of council and convocation of the university for a ceremony of conferring degrees and awarding diplomas. At this ceremony, the Pro-Chancellor, Ian Parton, and I will be conferring degrees and awarding diplomas. I now invite the Pro-Chancellor to award the diplomas and confer the degrees in the first half of this ceremony. Thank you, Chancellor. By the authority vested in me by resolution of the University of Auckland Council, I, Ian Parton Pro-Chancellor, confer the degrees and award the diplomas stated upon those who, within their faculties, have satisfied the requirements of this university. I call upon the Dean of the Faculty of Creative Arts and Industries, Professor Dixon, to present graduands in that faculty. Pro-Chancellor as Dean, I have the honour of presenting to you the students qualified for the conferment of a degree or award of a diploma in the Faculty of Creative Arts and Industries. Graduate Diploma in Music, Philip Stewart Anderson. <clears throat> to the degree of Bachelor of Architecture, Jackson Ingwe Law. <laughs> to
to the degree of Bachelor of Architectural Studies, Eleanor Louise Glinton. <laughs> Esther Lauren McCready. <laughs> Jairin Moon. <laughs> Kelly Louise Norris. James Rowan Rust. <laughs> Barrett Saad. <laughs> Josephine Feely Stoddard. <laughs> Nira Kumar Sumir. <laughs> Joseva Marcus Vikasi. To the degree of Bachelor of Music, Anna Miriam Cable, <laughs> Jung Dun, <laughs> Janine Dorothy Joyce Foster, <laughs> Alexander Christopher Freer. Ye So Kim Son Min Lee Nina Jaru Lin Moses Totipo Morris Mackay Adam Hunter McCoy. <laughs> Kirsten Mary McRae. <laughs> Lindsay Allen McDonald. <laughs> Antonius Leonardus Middledorp. Anthony Robin Shire. <laughs> Roseanne Georgia Sakanan. <laughs> Isaac John Charles Williams. <laughs> Chun Hin Yu. To the degree of Bachelor of Performing Arts, Yay Lim Choi. <laughs> Anastasia Olegovna Koltseva. <laughs> Sonia Renee Peck. <laughs> to the degree of Bachelor of Visual Arts, Sharon Amani Omatangi. <laughs> to the degree of Bachelor of Music Conjoint, Cameron Thomas Barclay and a Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> Jessica Shan Jones and a Bachelor of Arts. Postgraduate Diploma in Creative and Performing Arts with Merit. Myrna Labid Aranita in Dance Studies. <laughs> Postgraduate Diploma in Creative and Performing Arts. Andrew Jeremy Breton in Sound Recording and Design. Jia Ying Fa in Sound Recording and Design. <laughs> Monisha Ashni Kumar in Dance Studies. <laughs> Postgraduate Diploma in Fine Arts with Distinction. 
Shamira as Dola Zadi. <laughs> to the degree of Bachelor of Fine Arts Honours with Second Class Honours Second Division. Kate Megan Lill. Anna Starr. <laughs> to the degree of Bachelor of Music Honours with First Class Honours. Natalie Jane Harris in performance and a Bachelor of Music. <laughs> to the degree of Bachelor of Music Honours with Second Class Honours Second Division. Flavio Villani in performance. To the degree of Bachelor of Fine Arts Honours Conjoint, Tamsin Mary Hopkinson and a Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> Rose Marine Keane and a Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> to the degree of Master of Architecture with First Class Honours. Bruce CNA Doa Moa. <laughs> to the degree of Master of Architecture with Second Class Honours, First Division. Niger Binti Mohammed Owi in Sustainable Design. To the degree of Master of Architecture, Alexi Suju. <laughs> to the degree of Master of Architecture Professional with First Class Honours, Ellen Jane Ashenden. <laughs> Brad Thomas Bonington and a Bachelor of Architectural Studies. Karina Jen Ki Chan. <laughs> Leong Kim Chu. <laughs> Wei Guan. <laughs> Natasha Desiree Hutchin. Barbara Y. Kwan Lau. <laughs> David Chu Chun Lau. <laughs> Matthew Sean LeGrice. <laughs> Alex Liang. To the degree of Master of Architecture Professional with Second Class Honours, First Division. Craig Michael Barrett. <laughs> Melissa Ann Bennett. <laughs> Maria Chia Chen. Brian Kwan Yu Chung and a Bachelor of Architectural Studies. <laughs> Kei Yan Chu. <laughs> Kaylee Baowan Huang. <laughs> Ye Yu Jia. Daria Lenadovna Kolodetsnia. <laughs> Ji Hyun Willem. <laughs> Anjulij Pranish. <laughs> Nicholas James White and a Bachelor of Architectural Studies.
Stephanie Aileen Winquist. <laughs> Ying Long Thea. <laughs> Fei Fei Yue. <laughs> Jun He Yun, and a Bachelor of Architectural Studies. To the degree of Master of Architecture Professional with Second Class Honours, Second Division. Min Bo. <laughs> Anisha Bhattacharya. <laughs> Hugh Sun Lee and a Bachelor of Architectural Studies. <laughs> Yi Ching Lee. Ji Young Park. <laughs> Tan Ye Fong. <laughs> Jun Wang Yang. <laughs> to the degree of Master of Architecture Professional, Chai Wei and a Bachelor of Architectural Studies. Nguyen Te Toi Ni. <laughs> to the degree of Master of Creative and Performing Arts with First Class Honours. Hannah Bry K in Dance Studies. <laughs> to the degree of Master of Creative and Performing Arts with Second Class Honours, First Division. Sarah Lee Isabel Pearson in Dance Studies. <laughs> to the degree of Master of Creative and Performing Arts with Second Class Honours, Second Division. Renita Ruth Jellyman in Dance Studies. To the degree of Master of Fine Arts for Second Class Honours, Second Division. Jessica Kim Peerless, University Graduate Scholar. <laughs> to the degree of Master of Music with First Class Honours. Daria Anhalik Andakovic in Musicology. Jonathan Peter Mandino in Composition and a Bachelor of Music. <laughs> and in absentia, all those other persons named in the Book of Convocation qualified for the conferment of a degree or the award of a diploma in the Faculty of Creative Arts and Industries. Thank you, Pro-Chancellor, for conferring the degrees and awarding the diplomas in the first half of this ceremony. One of the great pleasures of graduation is the opportunity to hear performances by students from our acclaimed School of Music. Nick Hall on trumpet, accompanied by James Tibbald, will now perform La Résusance by Telemann.
Well, George uh, Tellerman actually wrote the five heroic marches. That's the first one from it. It's a particularly appropriate piece of music uh, for the occasion. But the uh, music itself, of course, was beautifully played by Nick and uh, accompanied by James. Can I ask you to show your appreciation again, please? By the authority vested in me by resolution of the University of Auckland Council, I, Roger France, Chancellor, confer the degrees and award the diplomas stated upon those who within their faculties have satisfied the requirements of this university. I now call upon the Dean of the Faculty of Law, Dr Stockley, to present graduands in that faculty. Chancellor, as Dean, I have the honour of presenting to you the graduands in the Faculty of Law. To the degree of Bachelor of Laws, Herman Suwuk Chung. <laughs> Lena Joan Eville. Michael Yong Siok Kim. Anna Manison. Karen Mary O'Shea. Charlotte Marie Summers. Anna Cecilia White. <laughs> to the degree of Bachelor of Laws Conjoint, Ayesha Myra Amon and a Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> Emily Elizabeth Scanlon Bergen and a Bachelor of Arts. Jasvinjit Kaur Boparoy and a Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> Julia Elizabeth Hine Aurangi Broughton and a Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> Madeline Jane Collier and a Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> Jason Brian Cox and a Bachelor of Arts. Beth Ford and a Bachelor of Arts. Christopher John Seppi Fraser and a Bachelor of Commerce. Christopher Russell Gillies and a Bachelor of Arts. Caroline Sarah Glenn and a Bachelor of Commerce. Nicole Kathleen Gordon and a Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> David Jeffrey Harris and a Bachelor of Commerce. <laughs> Matthew Donald Hartles and a Bachelor of Commerce. <laughs> Jesse Anna Hitchcock and a Bachelor of Arts. Kim Sarah Hope Hohaya and a Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> Johan Vegetaran Richard James and a Bachelor of Commerce. <laughs> Emma Louise Kemp and a Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> Hannah Bom Yi Kim and a Bachelor of Commerce. Jacinda Dewan Kirtland and a Bachelor of Arts. 
Kipling James Milton and a Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> Katie Moore and a Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> Siok Hoon No and a Bachelor of Commerce. Matthew John O'Neill and a Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> Uwe Purahit and a Bachelor of Commerce. <laughs> Brett Anthony Rawlings and a Bachelor of Commerce. <laughs> Fern Yi Seto and a Bachelor of Arts. Victoria Rose Skelton and a Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> Elise Sonia Sorensen and a Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> Cheryl Wa Chien Sun and a Bachelor of Commerce. <laughs> Ayushi Tandon and a Bachelor of Commerce. Chelsea Philomena Terre and a Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> Lana Aram Vaitu under Hulsem and a Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> Angela Kurusetu Vaai and a Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> Renee Sarah West and a Bachelor of Arts. Vivian Yat Wan Wong and a Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> Katie Manda Yukich and a Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> to the degree of Bachelor of Laws Honours, Rupert Henry Gillies. <laughs> Sarah Elizabeth Lawrence. Thomas Michael Pesley. <laughs> to the degree of Bachelor of Laws Honours Conjoint, Michael Anthony Burns and a Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> McGregor Thomas Kennedy Chapman and a Bachelor of Arts. Yoon Sun Choi and a Bachelor of Commerce. <laughs> Maria Fiona Clark and a Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> Amanda Mitch Michelle Clinton and a Bachelor of Science. <laughs> Francis Mary Jess Cummings and a Bachelor of Arts. Michael Jeffrey Dodge and a Bachelor of Commerce. <laughs> Sean Patrick Donovan and a Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> Amy Wenjin Duan and a Bachelor of Commerce. <laughs> Martin Timothy Dewis and a Bachelor of Arts. Kate Eastwood and a Bachelor of Science. <laughs> Elizabeth Grace Fox and a Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> Tracy Lynn Haldane and a Bachelor of Science. Max David Noble Harris and a Bachelor of Arts, a Senior Scholar in Law and Senior Scholar in Political Studies. <laughs> Bree Danielle Huntley and a Bachelor of Arts.
Gloria So Yeon Kim and a Bachelor of Arts. Han Ling Lai and a Bachelor of Commerce. Christy Sicily and a Bachelor of Arts. Patrick George Lilly and a Bachelor of Arts. Christy J. McGrath and a Bachelor of Commerce, Senior Scholar in International Business. <laughs> Alistair John Moen and a Bachelor of Commerce. <laughs> Alexander Joseph Nelder and a Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> Lily Eve Nunwick and a Bachelor of Arts. Michael John O'Brien and a Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> Jessica Maxine Pridgen and a Bachelor of Commerce. <laughs> Radhika Rani and a Bachelor of Commerce. <laughs> Michael Kieran Reagan and a Bachelor of Arts. Jasper James Rhodes and a Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> Kingy Dennis William Snellgar and a Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> Shao Jesu and a Bachelor of Commerce. <laughs> Amy Pauline Tiong and a Bachelor of Commerce. Kiri Rangi Toki and a Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> Daniel Nicholas Van Der Vel and a Bachelor of Commerce. <laughs> Lee Angela Walker and a Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> to the degree of Master of Laws with First Class Honours. Lauren Patricia Anderson in Commercial Law. <laughs> Alistair Ian Charles Birchall. <laughs> Justin Scott Emerson in Public Law. <laughs> Todd Richard Nichols. Marcus Arthur Paul Roberts, University Graduate Scholar. Christine Margaret Scott in Public Law. Nigel Leonard Kenneth Stone in Corporate and Commercial Law. To the degree of Master of Laws with Second Class Honours, First Division, Rana Muhammad Asad Abbas in Commercial Law. <laughs> to the degree of Master of Laws with Second Class Honours, Second Division, Porva Bhatnagar. <laughs> Bruce James Heskiff in Public Law. Ji Young Min in Commercial Law. And in absentia, all those other persons named in the Book of Convocation qualified for the conferment of a degree or the award of a diploma in the Faculty of Law. I now call upon the Vice-Chancellor to present the doctoral graduands. Chancellor, I have the pleasure of presenting to you the doctoral graduands.
to the degree of Doctor of Fine Arts, Clinton Ron Watkins, University Doctoral Scholar. Clinton investigated the effects that combinations of sonic and visual information can have on an audience. He observed these effects through the use of sound, colour, duration and scale of installations incorporating video production, custom designed audio and video hardware. To the degree of Doctor of Musical Arts, Liang Dung, University Doctoral Scholar. Liang investigated advanced technical solutions for pianists in the performance of some of the most difficult and challenging new repertoire for the piano, with particular reference to the music of Leggetti, Crum and Jewski. To the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, David Haldane Griffiths in Law, University Doctoral Scholar. David argued for a certain way of reading Section 15 of the New Zealand Bill of Rights Act, which protects the right to practice religious beliefs in public, and applied this reading to a series of case studies involving Islamic religious practices. Huang Ning in Architecture, University Doctoral Scholar. Ning studied the eco burden from various transport modes in Auckland using the ecological footprint method. <laughs> David Ferguson Turner in Planning. David's research investigated the story of suburban housing in Auckland in the context of recent planning strategies to intensify the city. His study informs the development of regulating policies for sustainable urban form. And in absentia, all those other persons named in the Book of Convocation qualified for the conferment of a doctoral degree. On behalf of the university, I now invite all today's graduates to stand and receive the congratulations of us all. And this would be the perfect opportunity for the graduates to show their appreciation of their families and supporters and the staff of the university who have helped them as they achieve their qualifications today. This concludes this meeting of council and convocation of the university for the conferment of degrees and the award of diplomas. I now invite you to sing the first verse of God Defend New Zealand in Māori and then in English. The words are printed on the reverse of your programs. <laughs> 